Gustav Goes was a German writer and archivist. He was born in 1884 in Bamberg. After studies in München and Marburg, he joined the army in 1907. He left in 1920 and began to work at the archive in Potsdam. He began to publish fairy tales, but after his 1923 Das Verschlossene Buch, or the closed book, he switched to writing books about the military. He was sent to the Russian front during World War II and died in a Russian prisoner of war camp in Rybinsk in 1946. As to Das Verschlossene Buch, it begins with a nameless 13-year-old boy going to visit his grandfather, the apothecary, in the grand old pharmacy with a giant stone line up front. It is his birthday and so he comes to see his grandfather in the matter of presence. His grandfather refers to an old book he wants to give him, but then backs out, this being the closed book of the malicious sorcerer Hagan. But when his grandfather leaves the room, the boy hears voices in his head calling him to open the book and he does. And then he is in a suit of armour, not remembering where he is or why, and goes outside to join a band of armed men flying along on flying horses. He now remembers himself as being Johannes Perunite, the son of a king, who went out into the world to seek adventure and nearly died before being rescued by Hagan. Arriving at the invisible sea castle Ivin, standing in the middle of the ocean on top of Coral Mountain, amid giants, dwarves and people turned into animals by the malicious Hagan, Johannes is sought out by the same terrible wizard. The band had captured Prince Agidio and took him to Ivin as prisoner, as Hagan needs him out of the way so he can try and seduce Agidio's bride, the Princess Alisa of Alcanda. To show Johannes his power, Hagan shows him around his garden, where flowers and trees grow into maturity in seconds only to die almost at once, out of his sheer spite all containing the souls of men who have wronged Hagan before, condemned to endless dying and withering away for his amusement. Then Hagan sends his soul into the realm of the elemental giants for some reason, and then turns him from Johannes Peronite into Silvio, the messenger page of Princess Alisa, forgetting all he had seen and heard at Ivin, and believing the made-up story of a Gideo killing a giant worm that Hagan told him, he takes from the wizard a small golden shrine with a living heart inside it as a gift from a Gideo to Alisa. Arriving at Alcanda, Alisa accepts him as the real Silvio and takes the golden shrine from his hands and breaks down crying, knowing it is Egidio's own heart. Waiting for Egidio's return in vain, Alisa would go in search for him. But Johannes, i.e. Silvio now, begs her to let him go to the mountain to look for him instead. Along the way, a talking deer gives him a ride past a horde of angry mountain giants, but then he's beset upon by Arco, the bear king of the mountain, who refuses to eat him, however, as he already ate the real Silvio the other day when Hagan threw him off the mountain, and telling him what he found out from Hagan's pet vulture go as to what his plan is and how he can be defeated. With this knowledge, Johannes returns to Alcanda and reveals who he really is and what Hagan's plan is. He must lure Alisa out of the castle outside of the protection of her guardian white dove, as her love is the only thing that can free Hagan from the curse of eternal life. Alyssa refuses any advice and goes to confront the wizard, who wishes to turn her into a snake forever for the offence of rejecting him. But then Johannes trips and stabs himself, spilling his blood under the dove's wing, which somehow enables it to defeat the vulture forever, and by extension Hagan. The book's main problem is that it meanders a bit. Also, none of what Johannes learns at Ivin from talking to the animals is of use because he forgets it all, 